Well, still perhaps, well, not really. Best known for her five-year stint on the 80s music show Radio with Pictures. We have fond memories of that, but she's done so much more as well. Karen Hay is also an award-winning writer and a radio host as well, and she joins us now to tell us all about her new risque, slightly risque, Victorian novel, The March of the Fox Gloves. Welcome, Karen. Thank you. Good to be here. It is an absolute pleasure to have you here. First of all, congratulations. Thank you. On your latest work. Now, this novel, let me just get this right, it's set in 1893 in both London and Tauranga. Yes, it is. And you're paying tribute or homage to your great-grandparents, who also went from London to Tauranga. Uh, from Ireland. From Ireland to yeah, Tauranga, not, okay. not necessarily tribute, but that's where the idea for um, setting it there comes from. But um, interesting that you say Tauranga, because that's how they used to pronounce it then, and then we went into Tauranga. <laughs> now we come back to Tauranga. Uh, so how much of this novel is based on, you know, I guess their lives? Oh, none. It's fiction. Right. Yes. That, I just set it in the Bay of Plenty because I know the area quite well. Right. Uh, and I love the area. I love Tauranga. And, <laughs> uh, yeah, and I know the streets and the roads, and it was a fascination to go back in history and see what it used to look like. I because bet. that's the thing. When I always think when people write books that are set in a, t a certain time frame, you have to be so careful with what you do. I mean, how much research is involved in writing something like this? Endless. If you're obsessively uh, a perfectionist, which I am, uh, I just wanted to get it right. I didn't want to, uh, an historian, for example, to go, that's incorrect. So I feel I know an awful lot about the 1890s and also New Zealand and that particular region and transport and buildings and how they lived and how they got about and what Etiquette. they thought, mm. like the politics of the time as well. And for example, there was no um, train to Tauranga at that time from Auckland. It was a, um, you went on a steamer. You went from the Auckland wharves uh, and down the coast. That'd be a great trip, yeah, it would actually. Be a great Overnight trip. trip yeah. Past the Mercs, be lovely. 14 hours. Wow. Uh, who's the main character in the book? The main character is a 26-year-old called Frances Woodward, who's a Londoner, mm -hmm. and she's uh, come to New Zealand on her own, which is really unheard of. In that time, a woman never travelled on their own without a chaperone at that, of that age. They oh. always went with a chaperone, so it was a big adventure. And uh, a lot of the um, research, when you're talking about the research, the historical accuracy, she came on the Ruahine, which was um, a steamer that left from London regularly. It took two months. Oh, God, and, what a journey. Yeah, well, a journey too and uh, in the particular time frame that this book is set uh, January 1893 she left London there was a big fire on the Ruahine and they only just made it out they um, had to call into the island of St Helena uh, but they were five days at sea where they were battling this fire Wow Gosh, you've hooked me in already. Aren't you? <laughs> no, we haven't even got to the risque pictures yet. No, we haven't got to the risque <laughs> pictures yet, but we will very soon. The thing about this book is that there's actually two versions of it. There's the version that we can get in the bookshops, isn't yes. there? That's and then the there's back. there's another one, which is a slightly more risque version that we can get, especially online, which has got some pictures in it. It does have some pictures in it. Uh, this one was the idea of making the, the novel a bit more glamorous in a time when publishing seems to be going through hard times as everyone is and just making it a little more glamorous. Well, a lot more glamorous, actually. <laughs> uh, this is a limited edition, uh, special edition hardback, which is come, 750 copies altogether. And with that, we went to Melbourne and shot um, 12 exclusive photographs with the fine art photographer Vicky Pappas Vergara using a burlesque model called Miss Cena King as one of the characters in the book because Francis Woodward is a photographer. Right. Uh, so that follows the plot. Look, and there's some on screen there. There's one that we can put on screen. <laughs> that's Beautiful. That's Dolly Dewlap in full pose mode. Uh, but they are authentic as, as we could make them. Everything in that shot is authentic because wow. the, the pantaloons, uh, the perfume bottles. Uh, so it was like doing a film shoot in that regard. Stunning pictures, absolutely stunning. stunning. And it makes they... this version mm. that little bit extra special, doesn't it? It does. And also there are 20 original sketches by uh, Rung Rutan... Rut Janovich, got to get his name right, uh, and they are following the plot as well, and that was really amusing doing that because we did that in Bangkok, and he hardly speaks English, so I had to tell him the plot, and he would go, <laughs> "What, Karen?" And I'd go like this, and I'd be pantomime. This is what happens here. We're at a ball, and these people are doing this. It's a fancy dress ball. So, but he, after two weeks, we really worked it out. He's a stunning illustrator. He's so good. So it features um, twenty sketches as well because the Victorian novel often 
often had illustrations in it, not photographs, but illustrations. So I wanted to make it really special. Yeah, and look, and I can tell pretty much that this is special straight away just by the little bit that you've told us. But it looks like it's a big process putting together a book. So how long did you work on this one for? Huge process. Uh, the, the writing of the book itself is four or five years, I wow. think. But um, I, I never expected to take it to that other level and have those layers on it. So thank you to Esom House Press, who are the publishers, uh, because they allowed me to do that. And it was like using a whole lot of other skills mm. uh, to bring that to life. And the research involved with it too, that you say that you, you call anyone to actually call you out and find anything wrong with this book, don't you? Because you've historically researched it incredibly accurately. Side it's perhaps the odd, odd typo. Uh, <laughs> we can forgive anyone uh, the odd but typo. No, the, with the research, yes, I hope I've got everything right. And, and I really, even words, for example, one of the things that people will find interesting is that um, every bit of language that is in there is correct. For example, one of the characters, Mopsa, she's 10, and she said, We've got heaps more sheep here in New Zealand. This is 1893. They used that expression. <laughs> no way. Yes, yes they did. <laughs> Brilliant things to know. This is a great sounding book The March of the Fox Gloves by Karen Hay. Uh, you can get it. It is available right now. Karen, thank you so much. Thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate the opportunity to talk about it. No, and congratulations. And this special limited one you can get online.